What is up, Jax fans? Here we are on a Monday night, so you know some things had to go down if we're here on a Monday. And I think we all know some things did go down. I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, they're not all well formulated, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I Admittedly, I was going to show some film um, about some of the players. Look, I got through I got through some of the film here. Uh Take a look here. Like, I got through some. I was looking at some Mitch Morse film. And I was like, oh, I'm going to show some film on some of these people. Uh, and then I just kept, like, watching and kept watching. And, and, I, and I'll admit, the last two games of the season that Mitch Morse played in, um, they weren't that good. All things considered. But that doesn't mean he's a bad player. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting you through my thoughts here. So I was like, I don't have a lot of good clips. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to break up the different... Uh, film breakdowns on the players separately. So this show, there's not going to be any film. I tried, but just like I couldn't, couldn't bring myself to do it. Not tonight. So we're just going to talk all things Jacks. We're going to talk uh, Mitch Morse. We're going to talk uh, 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 Gabe Davis, Darnell Savage, Ronald Darby, Dever Duvernay, du De Duvernay, Duvernay. Uh, the the illustrious career that Will Lutz had as the Jags. We're going to talk all those things. Mac Jones. How am I going to leave out Mac Jones? That's, that's, uh, I can't believe I even th left him out. So tonight is going to be about you guys. I'll do my film breakdowns. You guys know me. I'll do my film breakdowns. I'll put them out. I'll put them out as not live shows. So you guys can just watch them tonight. I want to get your feedback because this is a fan show. This is your first show with us. Welcome. Um, we do shows randomly apparently, but typically Tuesday nights, sometimes Fridays and then sometimes Mondays. So I'm so glad you're here. I hope you enjoy the show. It's basically just a Jags round table of me and everybody in the chat. So get in the chat. Uh, let me know what you think about all the signings. I'm seeing the comments kind of backed up here a little bit. And based off of the frequency of the comments that I'm seeing right now, there's a good chance I'm not going to get to all of them, but I will try. And if I miss a good comment that you typed, just copy paste it, type it again. Listen, there's no pride around here. I want to read your comment. I want to see your comment. So type it again. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, it doesn't take very much. It's, we talk all Jags here. This is a Jags show. It's fun. It's lively. Uh, you can go back and watch it on VOD uh, on the YouTube channel under the live tab if you miss it. A lot of people have been messaging me on Twitter like, I've been missing your live shows. Uh, that's fine. Listen, it, it hurts my feelings a little bit, but I get over it. I have thick skin. So just, you know, catch the next live show. If you hit the notification bell, you'll get a notification when I go live, which is always Tuesday nights, but sometimes randomly other nights. So do that. My Twitter and Instagram is also in the, uh, both of the video description and right here on the screen in front of you. I was on Twitter a lot today because there was a lot going on. So I have, a, I have some thoughts and I'm going to get to them. I'm going to I'm going to try to stay optimistic, boys. Like you guys know me, I'm the optimistic king over here. Like I I I spin everything for for hope. Um I'm going to get to my thoughts and, and I I don't know. We'll see how they go. So, uh we always shout out the first person in the chat and we always shout out the first channel member in the chat. And tonight the first member and the first channel member were the same person. That's Sea Breacher. Sea Breacher says, "Yo, I've noticed. I've noticed Sea Breacher's been playing some Rainbow Six Seeds lately. So that uh, leads me to think that when the new season came out, he's a little bitter about his rank. I think it was like Copper One. Uh, he's a little bitter about the Copper One rank. So he's trying to get that up, which is fine. I appreciate that. Robbie Santis says, "Yo, Kyle Simmons says, come on. Uh, that dude Evan, who's also a channel member, says it's party time, boys. <laughs> dude, it is party time because." Like, at least our GM's, like, alive and doing something. And, like, this is, like, Trent Baalke's kind of always done this. Like, the day that free agency's available, he's, like, the Jags sign him. The Jags sign him. The Jags sign him. Like, that always happens. Like, Trent Baalke's definitely, like, on it when it comes to free agency. Now, is he on it when it comes to re-signing Josh Allen? We could debate that. But that's not actually what we're talking about tonight. If you want to bring it into your comments, that's fine with me. Okay, I have a feeling this show is going to go a little bit longer, so we'll see kind of how that goes. Um, I know you guys know that I like to talk, <laughs> but at about an hour, I get I get a little winded. So well, I may have to take a little break and come back to it because if you, I have a bunch of tabs. Look at these tabs at the top. Look, at, I even have them. I even have them like separated by player. Okay, so like we have a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about tonight. 
So I'm going to try to get to your comments. Give me your feedback. We're going to get to them all. Uh, Sig Ren 88 says best player available at 17. Now I still think they're going to go corner at 17. And I know I said a couple weeks ago that I thought the whole corner talk was a smoke screen. But that was before I knew about the Darius Williams release and good news. I mean, Darius Williams, we were going to give him $10 million next year. And I'm stealing this from Reddit. There was a post about it on Reddit. We were going to pay Darius Williams $10 million next year. And now we're paying Ronald Darby $10 million over the next two years. So maybe it's not apples and apples comparison. Maybe correlation does not equal causation, as my statistics friends like to say. But we got some value with Ronald Darby, but we're not getting to him quite yet. Elliot Smellian says, let's go United. Uh, Chase has a decent day. Ben Perry says, hello. Robert Adrett says, crazy first day of tampering. Rajib says, guys, I even got an offer from Balky earlier. This guy's on a shopping spree. Now, I like the picks that we, I'm sorry. I like the signings that we signed today. Like, I, I like Mitch Morse. I like Gabe Davis. I like Ronald Darby. Um, I like Mac Jones. Unfortunately, and I don't, I don't want to spoil anything here, I I don't think we're going to see a lot of that fruit uh, uh, this year. Um, Mitch Morse is obviously an upgrade over Luke Fortner. But he was really bad in that Pittsburgh game. And he wasn't that good in the Kansas City games. Why is that important, Jason? That's just two games. Well, it was just two games. You're right. You're right. But it was the two playoff games they played in. So, yes, anything's an upgrade over Luke Fortner. I just kind of thought when we signed him and I looked at his mug. I mean, look at this mug. I mean, look, I mean, look at that. I even tweeted, like, that's a center if I've ever seen one. I just, I mean, he's good at some things. Like, he's he's very good at, and again, I watched I watched just two games, um, two playoff games. And, and I'm going to do more of a deep dive for the rest of the season. He graded out really well in a, in a lot of different games. I mean, we might as well just look at it while we're here. I mean, I don't need to. I don't need to kind of sandbag you anymore. If we, I think there's a better visual here. I mean, yeah, I mean, th these are good grades for a center. And I know PFF's not the end-all, be-all. I get it. And most people actually hate PFF. That's fine. That's fine. I like to use PFF. Bad game against Philly. You know, we look at when they played some of the good teams. I know he, I know he graded out decent against Kansas. And he did decent against Kansas City. I didn't mean to kind of like – Throw him under the bus there for his performance against Kansas City because he did really well, especially holding up against their nose tackle one-on-one. Um, -on -one. I thought he had some good plays. Very good at like uh, playing the double team and double teaming with the guard. And when you have a guy like Brandon Sheriff who's kind of a liability, you want a guy that can play double team, that can double team well. Uh, he gets to the second level pretty well. Um, he can snap the ball and then he can like scoop to the outside. And he can pull block on, like, outside runs pretty well. He did a lot of, like, good blocking in the RPO. Um, it was just weird because the Bills ran, like, two different offenses. They fired their offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, and hired a new one. And their offense looked a lot different. So, I think, I think, I haven't watched all the games yet. But I think that the offense looked differently. And they did a lot of RPO stuff where Mitch Morris would, like, pull to the outside and block the outside runner. And then Josh Allen would pull and then run to the opposite side. And that doesn't really tell me a lot about Mitch Morse. He's got good feet. Um, he's, he's, he's 32 years old. Uh, 6'6", 305. I like that. He, he only had five penalties all year, which is nice. That's got to be refreshing. I only gave up one sack, which is also refreshing. Um... I just didn't see anything on film in those two games that leads me to believe that he's an elite center. Now, Jason, we never thought he was an elite center. We just thought he was an upgrade from Luke Fortner. That's fine. That's fine. Do I still think they need to draft an interior guy who can play center and guard? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, because by no means do I think Morse is a long-term answer. I think maybe he's a year or two stopgap. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I was underwhelmed with the two games that I watched. And I'll be completely honest with you guys. It's only two games. You can't get a complete sample size in two games. Uh, let's, I mean, what else we got here? We got 
Um, this is this is the grades by um, game here, and you can see like the Buffalo offense was. I mean, you look at these pass block snaps and the run block snaps; they're pretty split. I mean, they pass a little bit more. Um, when we get here to pressures, let's go over here to pressures. When we go to pressures, um, gave up two hits, which is not very many. One sack, which is very good. And then you can't quite see because my head's in the way, but 20 pressures. Um, win rate of 96. That I mean, that that's pretty good. That's a pretty good win rate. Now, again, what he was asked to do um, – wasn't quite taking on one-on-one -on -one blocks in the same way that I felt like Luke Fortner is. Again, two-game sample size. I want to be honest with you guys. This, I didn't. I didn't even want to talk about this. I. I. Th this is my problem. I didn't want to talk about this because I haven't watched enough to make an assessment. And I apologize, guys. Like this is me not being good at this. So I'm gonna retract my statements about Mitch Morse, all of them. Uh, forget everything I said. I'm gonna get to the comments. I apologize. I can't make a fair assessment off two games. And that's on me. That's my bad. All right, let me get to some of these comments here. Um, ooh, okay. Uh, Montana says, <laughs> I'm really behind. Uh, McCorkle Jones, Mac Jones, welcome home. Yeah, hometown guy. He went to Bowles High School. Um, yeah. Donald Johnson said, awesome day. Added some good talent. Isaiah Jones says, I feel pretty good, honestly. Ben Perry says, feeling pretty good, to be honest, but still got to figure out Ridley's situation and pass rush. 100 miles per hour, who is a channel member. So it's been a while. Balky had me so uninterested in the team, but today was fun. Today was fun. Isaiah Jones goes on to say, if we don't get T. Higgins or Calvin Ridley back, then we could still draft a wide receiver for cheap high in the draft. True. It, I mean, from everything I'm hearing, it's a rich um, wide receiver class. So maybe that's maybe that's the strategy. I mean, you know they got to take a corner. You know they got to take an offensive lineman. You know they got to take a defensive lineman. You know they got to take a receiver. Is that your first four picks in no particular order? Probably. Or, or does he take a linebacker? <laughs> I don't know. I cracked myself up. Uh, Donald Johnson says, uh, Davis and Zay can be awesome deep threats while Kirk and Ingram eat. And I will say this. Uh, no, no, I'm saving it. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. I got some Gabe Davis comments. I was about to go into my Dave Davis comments. Uh, I'm going to save them because I do have some comments about him. But I'm getting back to that. Chase says, Bulky isn't off the hook yet, but the center and Gabe Davis are real nice. BT, channel member, says, Go Jags! Thrilled to see us being aggressive today. Donald Johnson says, uh, Savage was the biggest surprise move for me. Didn't see that one coming. Uh, another guy that I liked when we signed him, and then I started looking into him a little bit, and this is all I'm going to say. Again, reserving all judgment until i watch the film but these are the cold hard facts about darnell savage 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 one of my freaking french 80 percent reception rate when thrown to don't like that <laughs> don't like that one bit and how maybe he's coming into like for depth or to be like a guy till they can get antonio johnson ready and if that's the thought process okay Okay, but I don't want anyone in the secondary that gives up 80% completion rate. And to, like, add insult to injury, uh, I think he, he had, like, over 100% quarterback – or not percent, 100 – over 100 quarterback rating was his average. So, opposing quarterbacks had over 100 quarterback rating. <laughs> reserving judgment. I'm reserving judgment, boys. I am. Because we don't have a safety right now. We have we have we have Andre Cisco and we have Antonio Johnson and Andrew Wingard. We'll put a pin in that we're putting a pin in that for now. I'm telling you, boys, this might be a long show. This might be a long show. As, I mean, if I can if I can just uh, if I can keep talking, this show might be <laughs> three hours. It might be Pat McAfee around here going three hours. Uh, 100 miles per hour channel member says, will Mac Jones to Tim Jones be a top five preseason duo? Thank you, 100 miles per hour. See, that's why I love you guys. I would have never thought of that in my in my brain ever. And, and that's a great thought. Mac Jones to Tim Jones. Getting everyone hyped. <laughs> I actually like the Mac Jones signing. I actually like the Mac Jones signing here. Like, I like that they, like, I like it. 
Trade the sixth round pick. I like it, and here's why. We talked on this show a lot last year about how when Trevor was injured, we looked at the other teams, and we looked at like other teams that were in situations where their backups were playing, and almost every single NFL team had their backups playing for at least a game. Now, when your season comes down to the final week of the season that you have to win and you shit your pants and you play terrible, you want a good backup because then maybe you're not in that situation. Maybe you're not in that situation where when your backup quarterback comes in, you're like, well, let's just let's just hope that we can win later. Now we have a quarterback with NFL experience. We have a guy who's proven that he can win games at a certain level. He can understand offenses. He's going to not kill you. I, I actually think that might have been the best move he made. And I know people are going to turn this show off right now because of that take. But think about all the times that we leaned on C.J. Beathard last year. Trevor was out a lot last year. And I know that's not typical for, for, for Trevor. Or, or he was playing hurt. If you have a guy like Mac Jones and Trevor Lawrence freaking sprains his MCL, sit Trevor Lawrence for a couple weeks, let him get his knee good, and then put in Mac Jones, who can at least win you half of those games that he's playing. And then that way you're not putting in Trevor Lawrence and he can't move, he can't run. So now he's getting a shoulder injury and he's getting a head injury and he's getting a, an ankle injury because he can't get out of the pocket. That might have been the best move they made. Food for thought. That's all we do around here is food for thought. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> we all knew this was going to happen. We all knew I was just going to, I was just going to rant, but I think, I think I've gotten to all my rants. I, I think those were all my rants. <laughs> I don't believe that near to you guys. All right. Um, Rajiv says, did a good job managing, not overpaying these dudes. I thought. Timmy Devil, oh, Timmy Devil's here, was not expecting all of these, Jason. A new center is all I'm happy about. He goes on to say, the Jags front office are, are admitting that they are bad at drafting wide receivers with these moves, and I appreciate the honesty. Timmy Devil, to play devil's advocate, because Timmy Devil and me have this great relationship where we're able to debate and still love each other. I would just counterpoint. Who of the Jags drafted at wide receiver? Parker Washington? Am I am I missing another draft pick that they drafted as a wide receiver? Like, they're not drafting wide receivers. Like, I'm going through them in my head. Christian Kirk was a free agent signing. Calvin Ridley was a trade. Zay Jones was a free agent signing. Jamal Agnew was a free agent signing. Tim Jones was an unrestricted free agent. Evan Ingram was a was a free agent signing. Parker Washington is the only guy they drafted. So I think you can make that claim about other positions. Um, going out and getting a center. Eh, they, they, they didn't hit on their third round center. Okay. Uh, what are positions that we would like them to admit they missed on? Okay. And we're just going to go top to bottom. Not in any particular order. Uh, Trevon Walker. Don't think they missed on him, but they didn't go out and get a D end, so they're not admitting to that. Uh, they drafted a shit ton of linebackers. They're not going out and getting other linebackers. Um, getting us, you know, they haven't added a single offensive lineman besides Morse. They're not adding a running back. They're not adding, um, they haven't added a corner yet in free agency. Well, I guess Ronald Darby is a corner, but he's more of a nickel corner, right? Um, so I don't know if, still yet they've admitted to not being good at something, which I think is their biggest downfall. Callie Jag, who we miss Callie Jag, says, I'm in the house. I feel a little better about the O-line today. Okay. All right. All right. Isaiah Jones says, the only thing I'm thinking about is some pass rush uh, besides Allen and Walker, of course. I think the water receiver position will be covered in the draft most likely. Aiden Tobin says, I think Gabe David, I think you're meaning, you're meaning uh, uh, Gabe Davis, but it's okay. Autocorrect gets us all. Uh, I think Gabe Davis was a fantastic signing. Fast. He can block with great hands. All right, let's take a look at Gabe Davis. Great, great um, transition. I love when y'all transition for me. 
So one thing that stood out to me about Gabe Davis is um, first thing is that he played in 966 snaps, and that's including special teams, which wasn't that many. But um, 45 receptions, 746 yards, so that's a number three. Seven touchdowns, which I like that number. The thing is with Gabe Davis is that four of those touchdowns were like in consecutive weeks. I think it was weeks like two through five or whatever it was, six, whatever. So don't, don't test me on math right now, right? So had a strong start to the season. Now, was there injuries? I couldn't tell you. I haven't had time to, haven't had time to research it yet. I haven't done the film breakdowns on these guys. Yet. This, this stuff all happened today. This stuff all happened today. So I haven't had any time, but uh, that's what stood out to me the most. We look at these grades here. Another guy like Mitch Morse, and maybe this is a this is a, a a repercussion of the of the Bills changing offensive coordinators. But started out strong, had some good games, and then kind of tailed off a little bit, right? Um, if we look at um, oh, that's the wrong one here. Sorry, this is a little visual for all you ADD learners that like to have a visual representation, like like me. Like me. Good against the Jags, of course. Not surprising. Good against the Eagles. Broncos. Had a great game against the Chargers. Uh, and then, you know, the playoff games aren't on here. I don't know why. Come on, PFF. Uh, looked at this already. All right. This is a cool thing to look at. The receiving depth. Okay. Receiving depth. So, 32% of his targets were 20 yards or more. So, obviously, he's the deep threat guy. And with a 44 reception, that's actually really good for over 20 yards. You guys know me. Whether it's a quarterback or receiver, I love to look at the depth of the throw, of the catch, of the attempt. 44 is very, very high. And in fact, look at his grade. 99.4. Now, I know it was only 25 targets. But that's almost as high as you can get as a deep threat. And knowing bulky... And uh, Khan, I'm not talking about Shad Khan, I'm talking about Tony Khan. They love their analytics. And when they saw this 99.4 re deep receiving grade, they probably were like, let's get this guy in the building right now. Very good. 79.4 drop percentage, meaning he didn't drop a lot of balls that were thrown deep, which is refreshing knowing this team. I kind of like his... And here's what I like even more than all this. He's only 24. He's only he's younger than Luke Fortner. He is younger than Luke Fortner. Like, wrap your minds around this. We got a guy in free agency who's been on a winning team with a winning quarterback and produced. We got him in free agency for younger than Luke Fortner. Crazy to me. Absolutely crazy to me. Um, average depths of target 28. So he's not just hitting 20. He's hitting like 28 on average. Now, Josh Allen did throw three interceptions while throwing to him, which isn't great because Trevor Lawrence <laughs> might be known to do that, but not bad. All right. So then we look at everything else around here. Um, 23 targets, 10 to 19, which I like because that's a high number. 29 targets short, which is normal because it's easier to throw short. And then only one throw behind line of scrimmage. So not a guy that we're going to use in the uh, vertical passing game. I'm sorry. The horizontal passing game. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. It's been a long day. Um, Man, I am um, way behind here. I'm sorry, guys. I think, okay, I got that one already. Sea Breacher, do you think there's still a chance we trade for Sneed? I mean, we're running out of draft picks, but if we do trade for Snead, then that would definitely make not drafting a corner in the first better, but now you're having to pay him. I, I think I think they're done with trades. I've heard rumors of a Cam Robinson package trade. Maybe, but if that happens, I think it's not going to be a trade for a player. I think it's going to be a move up in the draft. Like, here's our third, and here's Cam Robinson, and we're going to take your second round pick. I think that's more realistic than trading for a player. I think we're done with trades. Maybe I'm wrong, though. I didn't see the Mac Jones things coming. I, I mean, did nobody saw the Mac Jones trade coming. So we don't really know. Uh, 
Zenith RX says the theme seems to be not blatantly overpaying this time around. Although the Christian Kirk overpaying ended up not being overpaying and ended up being a good pick or a good a good signing. So Isaiah Jones says I'm thinking Nate Wiggins at 17 and a wide receiver like Keon Coleman in the second, or we could get a wide receiver in round one. Either way is fine with me. I don't I don't think we go wide receiver in round one. I think we go best player available like whoever said earlier in the chat whether that's an, a d tackle whether that's a offensive lineman whether that's a receiver whether that's a corner i think they have their big board and they're gonna take the best player that's there he's always done that he's always he's literally always done that in fact he likes to trade down like he likes to have his guy anton harrison and be like i we can get him later i'm gonna trade down so like could the Jags trade down and acquire more picks? Now, those later picks, they will do nothing with. But those early picks, those first-round picks, they might hit on those. They might hit on those. Uh, Brandon says, according to PFF, Ronald Darby was one of the best press corners in the league. He just needs to stay healthy. Yeah, I guess we can look at, P we can look at um, Ronald Darby a little bit here. So this is his snap spy position. And... Um, if we look at his slot, this is wide. Um, so he, he played, I mean, he actually played 77 snaps out wide, 53 in the slot, uh, big kick return guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, he'll definitely be a slot guy for sure. I, I like the wrong, I was like perusing the Baltimore Ravens subreddit and they were pretty bummed about Ronald Darby that was the wrong that was the wrong person okay let's try this again let's try this again <laughs> Ronald Darby all right uh wide corner 514 snaps at wide 13 at slot so definitely still more of a wide player here uh, we were looking just looking at Devin Duvernay I apologize guys my I have all these tabs uh and I and they're, they're useless they're useless might as well just cross them out um, but definitely played outside in Baltimore. But my point was like the Baltimore fans liked him for things that don't show up on the stat sheets. The things they were saying is like, he's a hard nosed player. Um, he's not afraid to like get in there and make tackles and for a guy his size. I mean, what is he? It's five eleven, one ninety three, and 31, 30 years old. And I know he's a press corner. Um, if we look at the games he played, I mean, yeah, he's, he played in, uh, let's get this right here with the totals here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He played in eleven games with over ten snaps. So yeah, we need him more than that. But I mean, we look at his. We look at. I mean, I have it here. Uh, one only gave him one touchdown. Only f he had five pass breakups. And he had a 75 passer rating against him, whereas Savage had over 100 passer rating. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. What else we got here? We got um, these are all the same here. Raw Jeep says, does Fortner help an older Morse manage the load so he can be more fresh for the playoffs? See, this is what I like, you guys. I didn't think about that. Because you know there's going to be nicks and bruises on the offensive line. People fall on each other. Awkward things happen on the offensive line. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Fortner could come in. And, like, you know, a little injury. Just bring in Fortner. Like, yeah, you know, he'll get us killed. But just throw some screens and, and some outside toss sweeps and quick passes. That's a good point. And maybe Fortner learns. Maybe Fortner learns how to play center behind him. Nate P says, not sure you've already mentioned it, but we also signed Ronald Darby. Well, yeah, you just mentioned uh, Yeah, I know. I just, I'm backed up on comments, so I know now you know that I've mentioned it. Donald Johnson says, great veteran leadership in that O-line room with Mitch and Sheriff to teach the young players we draft. So Donald Johnson's under the impression that we're going to draft a few guys, which I hope we do. And then they got some like grizzled veterans to be like, this is what it means to be a pro. This is how you practice. This is how you work out. This is how you train. 
This is how you watch film. You guys are bringing some good points here. This is why I like talking to y'all. This is like the third thing now that you've mentioned that I didn't take into account. Now, it hasn't even been 24 hours, so I haven't had a full day to digest all these picks, okay? But these are some good points here. These are some good points. I do like all these. Robert Adsert, one sack and seven pressures in the season, and PFF says he sucks when Fortner would do that in a game. Robert, I mean, here's the problem is like, he, I watched him on that, in that, in that Steelers game and he was atrocious. He reminded me of Luke Fortner in that game. I'm not kidding. And you guys know me. I'm optimist. I'm sunshine and rainbows. And I legitimately thought he looked like Luke Fortner in that Steelers game. Now he graded out on PFF pretty poorly, but I don't want that Mitch Morse. I do not. And Mitch Morse and Doug Peterson have some like history. Mitch Morse was at Kansas City when Doug Peterson was the uh, offensive coordinator there. Is that what it was? Right? Timmy Devil says, no way they are getting another wide receiver in the draft. Zay is still on the team. Kirk Davis, Washington, another other wide receiver, and now and new kick returner. Yeah, Devin DuVernay. Yeah, I got some thoughts on DuVernay. He didn't play a lot of offensive snaps. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he only had – he was injured. Now, he was a guy that was injured a lot or didn't see the field. But he only had four catches and nine targets. So he's a kick returner slash gunner slash special teams guy. I, I felt like I saw – maybe I'm in the minority here, but I felt like I saw Devin du, DuVernay – like, I feel like I heard his name being said a lot when I was watching football, right? Like, that's a well-known name. That's a name that I felt like when I was watching Ravens games, I saw him on the screen a lot. But I look at his stats, and he, like, had no production on offense. I don't know. Like, it's weird. Weird situation. Hunter Moss per hour says, uh, if our wide receiver core is Davis, Jones, and Kirk, then we are tanking. You left out Parker Washington. Penn State standout. Sixth round pick. Okay. Here's my point about this. Here's my point. And this is what I was referring to earlier, and I said we can get to it later. And we're 37 minutes in. Perfect time to get into it. I think, legitimately, this is not me trying to hype you all up. This is not me trying to gaslight you, right, as the popular term is nowadays. I legitimately think Trevor Lawrence is on that level where he could elevate the game of all the receivers around him. Here's my evidence. Here's my supporting evidence. Evan Ingram was looked at as trash before he got here. A guy who drops the ball. He had his good rookie year, and that was it. Evan Ingram gets in Trevor Lawrence's system. One of the best tight ends in the league. Christian Kirk was a guy who was overpaid. How could you pay Christian Kirk? He's a wide receiver, too. How could you pay him all that money? Comes here, dominates. Calvin Ridley comes off of two years of not playing football. Two years of not playing football. 29 years old. And now he's the hottest commodity on free agent market with, with a subpar statistical season. Parker Washington, six-round pick. Played in two games that meant anything. And now we're like, oh, Parker Washington can be pretty good. Jamal Agnew was a corner turned kick returner turned gadget guy. And Trevor Lawrence turned him in to a almost receiver that we kind of want back. Now, maybe it's not fair. Zay Jones also revitalized his career here in Jacksonville. Now, maybe it's half Trevor, half Doug Peterson. Regardless, that's who's here now. So that's what gives me hope about guys like Gabe Davis at 24 years old. I think Gabe Davis could step into this Jags offensive room with Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson and elevate his game Way more than we've ever seen him before. Keep in mind, Gabe Davis came from a dysfunctional offensive Buffalo team with a good quarterback and a bad coach and a bad offensive coordinator and still was pretty decent at 24 years old. Devin DuVernay is a guy who is like kind of a gadget player. He's got a specific skill set similar to Jamal Agnew. Who's to say he can't step into this offensive room and take the next step? We have seen all of these guys take the next step in this Jaguars offense 
So that leads me to think, why can't these guys do that? Now, they will need an offensive line to protect them. And I think that's the uh, ruminating thing in all of our minds. If Trevor doesn't have time to throw, it doesn't matter who's out there. That's fine. But if Trevor does have time to throw, I think, and I would make the case, that he can elevate the play of all these people. And I know what you're saying is like, that's not a star-studded room without Ridley. At the same time, we've seen Trevor and Doug elevate these offensive players to levels that they've never had before. So I think that he could do that. I, I do. I, I honestly do. Now, I'd love for them to bring in. I would love for them to re-sign Calvin Ridley. I would absolutely love it. I mean, that would be amazing to me. But yeah, we talked about this on the last show. We talked about this on Friday night. If you didn't watch it, you can, you know, I made this point. If I gave you these four people, Trevor Lawrence, Josh Alvin, Josh Allen, Calvin Ridley, and Cam Robinson, and I said you had to pick three, I think I would leave Calvin Ridley out. Only because I think Trevor Lawrence can elevate a receiver's play. I want a good left tackle. I think Cam Robinson's a good left tackle. The four-game suspension for the PEDs, that's unfortunate. The injuries in the mid-late in season, that's unfortunate. But when he's on the field, I'm not worried about left tackle. And I've said this before. You either have a left tackle or you don't. That's the bottom line. It's much more important than center. It's much more important than interior defensive line. And it's much more important than cornerback two. Okay, so you either have a left tackle or you don't. And I think Cam Robinson's a left tackle. And I get there's depth behind him and you can save money by getting his contract. That doesn't matter. I want a grizzly bear left tackle that I don't have to worry about that'll just maul on the left side. And I mean, you got to have a left tackle. You got to have Trevor Lawrence. You got to have Josh Allen. Calvin really the odd man out. He really is in that situation. Just a thought experiment. I could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot, boys. I'm wrong. I'm wrong a lot. Um, I'm backed up here on comments. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, God. I'm really backed up. Um, all right. I'm going to get to some of these channel member comments and scroll to the bottom. But keep them coming. I'm gonna, uh, so this is my attempt to catch up on the comments. Okay? Type it again. If it was a good one, type it again. That's what I was talking about. I knew this was going to happen. Uh, Volk Fang says, here, but I got to drive to work. Jags have not used a top 150 pick on a wide receiver since drafting Trevor. Hunter Miles Power says, Tank Bigsby increased role. <laughs> it's not entirely fair to Tank Bigsby. The fumbling, you can blame him. But not being able to run up the middle, is that Tank Bigsby's fault? No, because Travis Etienne couldn't run up the middle. Trevor Lawrence couldn't run up the middle. Nobody can run up the middle in this offense. You're telling me Travis Etienne is a bad back because he can run up the middle? And that's what Tank Bigsby's wheelhouse is, is run up the middle between the tackles? I don't think Tank Bigsby is going to be a player that really moves the needle for us. That being said, I'm not putting all the blame on last year on him. They couldn't even call run plays up the middle because of this offensive line. Hunter Miles per hour says 25% is too much. Timmy, LML, he's Fortner. That's a little stronger. Nolly Full Cab Chill Member says, I don't care if he's terrible. Gabe Davis went to UCF. He gets a pass. Blake Bortles also went to UCF. Does he get a pass? Because I love Blake Bortles. Hunter Miles Power says, Gabe Davis is cool only if we cut Zay. We probably will. Although Zay is a touchdown machine, though. How do we feel about Ridley walking and we draft a wide receiver early? I don't think we'll draft a wide receiver early. I think they're going to draft a either interior O-line or D-line player, probably D-line now that we have a, a, a sign of Mitch Morse. And I think receivers, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't, I can't get into the mind of Trent Baalke. I literally can't. I've tried. I've tried to think about what I would do in that situation. And he does the complete different thing than what I would do. So I don't know. I don't know. A uh, little stone official says Gabe only being 24 is major. Him and Zay Jones over the top, Kirk in the slot, Evan at tight end, all big physical and good receiving after catch targets. 
win for the Jags offense. If our wide receiver core is Davis, Jones, and Kirk. Oh, yeah, I read that one already. Okay, so I'm all over the place here. I'm just going to scroll down. Again, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm scrolling down. Type it again if it was good. Murtaza ID says, is it wrong to hope we underachieve so Balky gets fired? We need a GM who can get at l who can at least make stupidly obvious decisions. I get that sentiment, but and, and normally I would be with you, Murtaza. But our Trevor Lawrence window on a cheap contract is now. Look at these other teams that are having to cut cap casualties because they've had to pay their quarterback. I mean, I could list them for you, but we all know them. You kind of want to win when you have a quarterback on their rookie deal. we got two more years of that, and we probably will sign Trevor at the end of next year. So we, we're rooting for Trent Baalke. I know it hurts. I know it hurts. It's one of those like love your enemies type situations. You don't want to, but you know at the end of the day, loving your enemy will only produce fruit for you. And if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. How many idioms am I going to use in that statement about Trent Baalke? Okay, I'm done. I'm done talking about Trent Baalke. Uh, GNAT says, how do we become a channel member? All right, so GNAT, I, I'm not 100% sure. I'm 90% sure, which is still pretty strong. If you go to the YouTube uh, YouTube page on your desktop, there's like a little thing that says become a channel member, and there's different levels. We have like the Matt Jones level. We have the Maurice Jones Drew level. Uh, we have all different types of levels. So it, literally, it's like three bucks. You can just do it for a month if you want. Um, you could do a reoccurring member. Like uh, a lot of these guys in here are, are reoccurring members. Like I know Shay, Volkfang, 100 miles per hour. Um, a lot of these guys have been like members for like almost two years, which I really appreciate, by the way. But it's it's super cheap. It gives you the ability to use um, like emojis in your chat. It shows up a different color for me. And on nights like tonight, when the chat is like popping, 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 I, I literally don't can't read all the comments. Um, so I just kind of hit the channel members and the other ones that I can. That's why I tell you if it's good, type it again. And I don't want anyone. I'm not trying to like bully anyone into being a channel member. Like I don't do that. Like seriously, I absorb free YouTube comment content all the time. So like, I am just glad you're here. I really am. I really appreciate the channel members. I really appreciate it. Um, but I'm just glad you're here talking jacks. So. That dude, Evan, says Mac Jones about to make our preseason electric. <laughs> Seton Sesco. I had a conversation about Seton Sesco the other day. Um, I asked a mutual friend of ours who may, be, who, who may be a soccer ref and who may be a booking soccer ref. I was like, hey, hey, uh, just, a, just a question. Is, uh, is Seton Sesco refing with you this year? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. I think he is. And I said, oh, 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 okay, okay. He goes, why, do you know him? I said, oh, I know him. <laughs> oh, I know him, all right. That's for sure. Uh, Hunter Miles Power says, I could see a Cam Robinson to the Jets for Corey Davis. Oh, stop, dude. No, no. Gina says, ah, desktop. There may be a way to do it on, on your iPhone or Android device. I, I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know, to be honest with you. Corey T says, get some sweet emotes. Okay, so I will say, I had a great time. My Twitch link is in the channel description. Uh, I went off on this like political rant on my Twitch chat, like Friday or Saturday night. And Corey T, not only is he the reason why this whole show happens, just so you know, he also is so good at being able to handle political discussions with an open mind because my knowledge is limited on a lot of things. So if you can't sit and have a discussion with someone who brings up an opposing view without getting emotional, you need to probably check your emotions. You need to probably check uh, your pride because I got to give Corey T credit for that because Corey T single handed is responsibly responsible for not only this channel, not only this show, but Allowing me to critical think in a way that I've never been able to critical think before. So I appreciate you, Corey T. Thank you, thank you. I hope you know that. If I don't say it enough, I'm saying it now. Thank you, thank you. Isaiah Jones says, Cam Robinson for a mid-wide receiver in the fifth is kind of wild. 
G Grant says, if we trade Cam, that means an automatic tackle at 17. Walker has shown nothing in two years that says he will keep Trevor safe. I think the thought is that is that Anton Harrison moves to left tackle because that's where he played in college. And I think Walker Little is your right tackle. Like, genuinely, I legit think that. I really do. Um, which I don't – I'm not super against Anton Harrison playing left tackle. He's We've seen a one-year sample size. And he has just shown that he can handle his business over there at right tackle. So why are we anyone to think he can't handle it at left? So I actually would like to see a world where Anton Harrison is the left tackle. I just don't think that's this year. I think it's in the future, but I don't think it's this year. But yeah, put him over there. Cut Cam uh, down the road. I think we're sitting pretty with Anton at left tackle. Isaiah Jones says Cam is good, maybe not elite, but I, I think he's... I think he's top 10. I think he's top 10. I really genuinely think he's top 10 left tackle. JFJ says, very bulky skeptic in regards to the last couple of drafts, but he really had a good day today. All right, so if we kind of, if we kind of look at the, if we look at it all, we'll go from highest to lowest. Mitch Morse, I'm going to reserve judgment on Mitch Morse. He's an upgrade to Fortner. Gabe Davis, I like Gabe Davis. Is he going to be wide receiver two? Because if that's the case, then I don't know. If he's wide receiver three, then I think we're in good position there. Um, we haven't even gotten to um, Darnell Savage yet. Um, stats aren't looking good. But he does give you a little bit of a bumper safety net uh, for Antonio Johnson if there is some sort of learning curve because he has experience as a starter. He was drafted in 2019 in the first round. Um, plays more free safety than anything. Uh, but yeah. BT says to become a channel member, you have to go to the YouTube website. You can't do it from the app, but it's worth it. Thank you, BT. BT has been a channel member for a long time too. I appreciate that. Jags for life. 1994 says, what would you give up for Higgins? Sorry if you answered this. I just tuned in. No worries. Jags for life. I actually haven't addressed Higgins at all. I don't know. I don't know if I would trade draft picks for. I, we just have so many people on the books, and in the future we have so many people on the books. I don't know if I want to put another person on the books. I know, I, I know. Like, like I said, I genuinely, honestly think Trevor Lawrence can elevate the game of those around him if he has time. I don't want to spend a bunch of money at wide receiver. I would rather spend the money helping Trevor at the offensive line position than the wide receiver position. Because we've already spent the money on Evan Ingram, who is a great safety net. We've already spent the money on Christian Kirk, great player, when healthy. We've already spent the money on the left tackle at right guard. And now we've spent a little bit of money at center, spent a little bit of money on left guard, a little bit of money at running back. I mean, I like ETN. I think ETN's a great piece for this team, so... Brett James is here. What up, Brett? Brett says, go Jags, bro. Let's go, Brett James. I appreciate that. Brett James is a great YouTuber. Um, does great stuff on his. And he covers my favorite team, the Orlando Magic. So, um, love Brett James. Wish he was up in Jacksonville more. Wish he would hit me up when he was in Jacksonville more. But I'm not going to get into that now. I'm not going to get into that now. You know, I think it goes both ways. I think it goes both ways, for sure. So, don't think that by any means at all. Um, okay. Give me two minutes. Give me two minutes. This stream is going to be longer than an hour. So we're reaching an hour right now. I'm just going to run. I'm just going to refill my beverage. I'm just going to hit the bathroom real quick. Give me two minutes. Don't leave. If you leave, I get it, but you shouldn't. Um, give me two minutes. I'll be right back. Be right back.
Great song. I know y'all like that song. That's by Strain Anchors. Um, family with the band. So uh, you want to make sure that you're uh, Spotify, Strain Anchors. They're good. Good band. Uh, we're back. I appreciate you guys giving me that uh, little break there. I had to use the bathroom, man. I had to get a refill. So I appreciate it. There's so much that happened with the Jags today that, like, I, I have so many things I still have not talked about yet. Um, I haven't even talked about Savage at all. I mean, let's take a look here. So we look at, look at, at, at Darnell Savage here. 5'11", 198. Again, he's kind of, if we look at his, this is his snaps, like, by position here. So if we look at it, he had 429 snaps at free safety. 109 in the slot, 147 in the box. So he's definitely more of a free safety guy. So Andre Cisco kind of played that free safety role a bit. So it was like, my thought was, are you going to play Andre Cisco and Darnell Savage at the same time? Because one's a free safety and the other is also a free safety. Antonio Johnson is more of that box player. Ray Sean Jing is more of that box. I, th I think they still probably draft. I, I don't know. They kind of play the same position. And so, like, maybe I'm, I'm, maybe I'm grasping at straws here. But uh, if we look at his, like, by, by game grade, um, what stood out to me was the amount of games he had where he did not grade out well tackling. I mean, this is, this is not, I mean, that's, that's three games under 30 tackling. And when you're, a, and I get it, he's a free safety. But the thing that concerned me the most, this is what concerned me the most. And I kind of already talked about this a little bit in the earlier beginning of the show. The, the passer rating against him, 108.9. That is not good. <laughs> that, is not, that is not good, boys. I'm telling you right now, like, that's... I mean... One interception. He's given up two. He gave up two touchdowns last year, and both of them in the playoffs. By the way, so maybe we'll give him some slack there for being in the playoffs. But that I mean, that's just that's not ideal. That's not ideal. Um, I guess he only played in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He only played eleven games last year. Packers fans were kind of bummed to see him go. So I'm not 100% sure if maybe we're not getting an accurate depiction on PFF, which is probably the case. And I know that the Jags went into this season wanting to fix the pass coverage because the pass coverage was horrendous, especially at the end of the season. So I think, honestly, that the coaches came together, and I talked about the Ryan Nielsen interview, and I think Ryan Nielsen came in and said – all the right things in the interview. And I think one of the things he might have said was, is here's a statistical printout of your secondary last year. And it was so bad. Let me change it. And it will be good. And I think some of those changes include getting rid of all the coverage, safe, all the coverage guys. Darius Williams, gone. Trey Herndon, gone. Rayshon Jenkins, who I think is a good player. And, I, and he's getting looks at like Seattle and other places, but um, it's I think it's gone. Like, let me get my guys. And so I think Darnell Savage was a guy that Ryan Nielsen was like, if you get him at a cheap deal, which they did, um, then I think I, it could be good. So I think they're overhauling the entire secondary. You're keeping Tyson Campbell, obviously. You're keeping Andre Cisco, obviously. But outside of those two guys, and let's be honest, you start five guys in the secondary. You're in nickel more than you're not. So you have five defensive backs that are going to be starting for you if you're a team. And we have to replace three of the five. So you brought in Ronald Darby. You brought in Darnell Savage. You have Antonio Johnson. But those are three guys that, like, Darnell Savage, I'm not sold on. Antonio Johnson, we haven't seen a big enough sample size Ronald Darby, who I think is a great player, is, is 32, or is he 30? But he's he's kind of getting up there in age. Doesn't Didn't play a lot of snaps last year. So, And maybe the defensive secondary isn't a big deal to them. Maybe if they think they can get the pass rush going. I don't know. I don't know. Brett James says, got to hit you up more when I'm in jacks. I got you, bro. And Brett James, I only said that because 
And Brett James hits me up a lot when he's in Jacksonville. Um, so I didn't mean to slight him. But my only point was I did notice on Twitter that he was in Jacksonville the most recent time and didn't hit me up. That That's the only reason. That's the only reason. And I know. Listen, phone works both ways. Phone works both ways, right? But I'm not in Orlando very often. I'm a Jackson Beach guy. I'm a beach guy. I got to be close to the beach. I got to be walking distance to the beach at all times in my life, right? People are like, oh, you're, you're such a, you're such a whatever. It's like, no, 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 I would move. I would move. As long as the place that I moved was also walking distance to a beach, right? That's the only, that's the only caveat I have, okay? Got, I got to be close to the ocean. I'm an ocean guy. I'm a saltwater guy. Sue me. Don't sue me. Now you, you could sue me. You wouldn't get much money. That's the, that's the problem. Um, King David says, let's go Duval. I love it. Chase says, Gabe could easily have a career year here. I think he will. Being 25 years old, mo most people have career years in their mid-20s. Ron Beecher says, I was really happy to get Ridley, but you really didn't do very much after those run and catch numbers for Agent Zero. Chase says, look at his 2022 year stats. All right. We, all right. We can do that. We can do that. Gabe Davis, 2022 stats. Sorry, I have a gaming keyboard, so it's hard for me to type. All right. Let's take a look. I have 800 tabs open. All right. 2022, 836 yards. 17.4 average. Very nice. Seven touch. Dude, the, look at this. Look at these career totals for touchdowns. Seven, seven, six, seven. I'm, gonna t I'm just going to take a wild guess here, boys. I'm just going to take a wild guess. And I, and I don't know, you know. I I'm going to guess that Gabe Davis has seven touchdowns for us this year. <laughs> no, you know what? Not seven. I'm going to say he's going to have 6.8 seven touchdowns for us this year. <laughs> That's what I think. Uh, Christ is redeeming bread of life. Says, I was just watching your video, Brett. They were getting torched anyways. Okay. Tony D'Angelo says, Savage is mid. He needs to get his tackling right. Yeah. Uh, Tony also goes on to say, if it were me, I'd play Antonio Johnson at nickel. So I think the problem with Antonio Johnson playing nickel is when they line up in those like two by two or one by three, whenever you're in like a 10 personnel gun, you have four wide receivers out there. Do you trust Antonio Johnson to cover a slot wide receiver crossing across the middle of the field? Now you may be saying, well, pass off the, the route to your linebacker. Yeah, but Ryan Nielsen plays a lot of man. So when you play a lot of man, you're susceptible to the crossing routes. I don't know if I trust Nielsen to do that. I'm sorry. I don't know if I trust Antonio Johnson to do that. So that's the only issue I have. If we knew it was a running play, bring him down to the box. If it's um, 21 personnel and you got two tight ends in the game, two running backs in the game, yeah, bring Antonio Johnson in the box. But the NFL has not played that way. So that's the problem with Antonio Johnson at the current moment that we're at is I love his skill set, but until he can show me that he can cover in the middle of the field and like for decades, the NFL moved to this cover one, cover three, where your strong safety was always in the box recently over the last two years. Now we've moved into like a cover four, cover two NFL. To where you have two safeties playing half the field. And I don't I just don't know if I trust Antonio Johnson to play half the field. And again, I'm not saying he can't. I just we haven't seen enough of him to know if he can or not. And quite frankly, the Jags haven't seen enough of him to know if he can or can't. So you can't put all of your eggs in that basket. What's up my my idioms tonight? I I swear I've used every idiom on earth tonight. I apologize. I apologize. That's the that's the talker in me. You can't put all your eggs in that basket because you haven't seen it. So maybe that's what the Darnell Savage pick was. Is the, we want Antonio Johnson to be this guy, but we can't trust him completely to be that guy? Maybe. 
Maybe. Um, Mr. October says, LOL. I missed that whole exchange, obviously. King David says, who's the new special team specialist we got, and what does that mean for Agnew? All right, well, that was Devin DuVernay. And we'll bring up his stats by position here. Uh, if we take a look at over here, uh, again, this, I talked about this earlier in the show. Duver, Duvernay is a guy that, like, you always – I felt like when I was watching the Ravens play, like, his name always came up. But when I look at these snaps by position, specifically for last year, he had only had 77 snaps out at wide out wide receiver, 53 snaps uh, at slot. And just for, like, reference, that's like a tenth of the offensive snaps, those two combined. Okay? If, if you play – 1100 1200 snaps in a year you're looking at about a tenth of the snaps that he was on the field in a contributing way on offense last year for the ravens kick coverage 19 kick return 61 punt coverage 19 punt return 71 so he's a returner he's a returner he played more snaps as a kick returner and a punt returner than he did the entire season on offense and if you think about how often those special teams are out there the fact that he played just as many snaps just goes to show that he is a specialist so what does that mean for agnew not good not good but the bottom line is like i love everything about agnew but here's what i know as a someone that coached football i coached football for 10 years and the one thing that's unforgivable is fumbling. You cannot fumble the ball. You can't. You can be the greatest player of all time, skill-wise, athletically. But if you fumble the ball, you won't see the field. For example, look at that 2023 Jags at Chiefs AFC Championship game. divisional game Agnew costs us the game you hate that it comes down to one play you hate that it happened to that guy but the bottom line is and this was this was as some I've said this before on the show I went to that game up in Kansas City I was sitting directly the seats in front of Jamal Agnew's parents like his parents and what a lot of people forget about that Chiefs game is that Agnew had a couple of plays that actually helped us a lot. He had a kick return that put us back into the game. He had a couple of good catches that were outstanding. And a lot of people forget about those. And the reason why they forget about those is because he fumbled on the one-yard line that would have scored, that would have made the game like a lot different of a game. And the reason why is because all those good things he did, don't make up for the fact that he fumbled one time. That's how massive fumbles are to a football game. That loops back into the Tank Bigsby discussion. I think they like Tank Bigsby. They even used Tank Bigsby a good amount after the fumbling issues. But because he had the fumbling issues, they wouldn't put him on the field. You cannot put a player on the field that fumbles. So I love Agnew. I know Brett James was in here. Brett James loves Agnew. I had a I was high fiving Agnew's parents all game, saying things like, "That's your boy. That's your son. How proud of you! How, how proud are you of him?" Because I can't imagine the feeling of a parent seeing their child that they sacrificed, worked for, traveled, paid money for, now excelling at a national stage like the NFL, succeed. Only to see one fumble turn the tide of an entire franchise. Fumbles are massive. They're a big deal. You cannot fumble. Rule number one, they teach you in Pop Warner. They teach you in middle school. They teach you at high school JV. They teach you in high school. They teach you in college. You cannot fumble. A loss of 20 is better than a fumble. You can't fumble. I think that all that to say... These coaches, like, we've seen with the way they treat people that fumble the ball. They take them out. Now, why that same thought process isn't applied to centers, 
who get absolutely blown up at the point of attack is beyond me. Beyond me. Uh, G. Grant says, Balky obviously thinks Trevor can win with a roster of average slash fringe starter guys. And the last two drafts is depth. I think he looks for a major splash at wide receiver or D-line because Houston is legit. I did like seeing Jonathan Grenard get swiped away from Houston. That was big. That was, I mean, I can't remember where he went. Um, like, not enough people talk about Jonathan Grenard and how effective he was. But the Vikings signed him. And um, so glad he's not on Houston anymore. So glad. Ben904 says, I don't want to see Johnson matched up with Tank Dell. I know. The Texans are scary. Texans are scary. I'll, I'll, I will give you that. Uh, Jaggernaut says, hey, Jason. What's up, Jaggernaut? Says, so with the shining, shining, with the signings today, where do we go in the draft? I know we're not done yet, but thoughts. Okay, so if we didn't sign another player right now, I think we draft the best available player at corner or D-line. I lean toward corner, but if the board falls to where they have a corner that's graded as a second rounder and they have a D lineman that's graded for a mid to early first rounder, I think they take the D lineman, but I think it's, it's one of those two positions. Now, hopefully I'm wrong and they draft an offensive lineman and I know we have Cam Robinson on a big deal. I know we have Ezra Cleveland just re-signed. I know we just went and got Mitch Morse. I know we just restructured Brandon Sheriff and I know that we're happy with Anton Harrison at right tackle. But it's not enough because this franchise goes as 16 goes. Keep them upright. You know you're going to have injuries. Oh, we have Walker Little. I know. I know. We need more depth. We need more depth at the offensive line. And I'm willing to take a first-round pick on an offensive lineman because we know Cam Robinson is not the long-term answer. We know Mitch Morse isn't the long-term answer. We know Brandon Sheriff's not the long-term answer. So... For me, I find myself every year, every year, and you can go back and watch these shows for the last <laughs> three or four years. I'm always trying to get an offensive lineman in the first round. The offensive line is so important. It's so important. Like, if besides quarterback, I think offensive – if you have a quarterback on the stratosphere of Trevor Lawrence, he can elevate a wide receiver. He can't elevate an offensive lineman. He can elevate a tight end. He can't elevate an offensive lineman. He can keep the defense off the field with long drives. So if you want to save money on defense, your quarterback can keep your defense off the field. But he cannot help the offensive line. Big believer in that. I think all the best teams are big believers in that. So I don't care if you're happy with one through five. I don't care if you're happy with one through six. I need, for personal comfort, one through seven. And I am a firm believer in that because you're going to have injuries. And I'm not just looking at recency bias of the Jaguars last year. Every team ever has had injuries on the offensive line. Well, you don't have another cornerback. Well, get, get one in the second round. You got Tyson Campbell. Oh, well, you needed to D-line pressure. Yeah, you do. You do. But if we know anything, you got to outscore your opponents. Look at what Patrick Mahomes has done for the most ragtag group of offensive players of all time. Rasheed Rice, Isaiah Pacheco, these, these are, you know, Miko, Miko Hardman. These are good guys. But would you trade any of those guys I just named for anyone the Jags have right now? I'd rather have ETN. I'd rather have Christian Kirk slash Gabe Davis. I, I, I would rather have any of those guys. Oh, well, we have Travis Kelsey. Fair. Fair. But I think Evan Ingram's right there. So I'm not worried about that comparison. Felt like when Agnew was in the offense, it was too predictable. Sharni, who's a channel member, says the Jags are up to stuff. I just hope we are up to good stuff. Well, that's incredibly vague there, Sharni. Haven't seen Sharni on Twitch in a while. What's up with that, Sharni? Am I missing it? Or have you been slacking? Because I've been slacking. I just talked about my other YouTube channel. I pulled a Will Lutz on my YouTube channel. I said I was going to do a show on Saturday, and then I didn't because I had this whole idea for the show. 
and I didn't plan enough for it, so I didn't do it. And I felt bad. I don't want to give you guys a half ass show. You guys know me. I'm not going to do that. But we are going to do it. My other channel, it's in the video description, The Jay Trent Show. It's all sports, not just Jaguars, and politics. Yes, I'm merging the two. You're thinking, ooh, Jason, you're getting into politics. That's kind of risky. You're damn right it's risky. And you're damn right that I have a passion for it. So get in there. We're going to do a show this week. <laughs> I'm not pulling a Will Lutz twice, all right? We're doing it. Uh, Jaggernaut says, yeah, that Agnew fumble cut deep. Chase said, Agnew missed field goal return. Never forget. King David said, Joe Mixon's getting cut. The Bengals are straight fire sailing at this point. Isaiah Jones says, Trevor needs to be hold. Trevor needs to hold on to the ball better too. Okay. So if we're going to hold Agnew and Bigsby to one standard, we got to make sure we hold Trevor to that standard too. Okay. Trevor is our fumble overlord. Oh, y'all are getting me on that. Okay. Ron Beedry, you still need a dominant D-line, O-line, cornerback, pass rusher. Yeah, we need lots of players. <laughs> That's why a trade down. A trade down may not be the worst answer because you could probably get a corner like in the late first round, get another second round pick or another third round pick, add some starters, fingers crossed, bulky. G. Grant says, if Cam is still here and Ridley is gone, you take wide receiver. If Ridley and Cam are here, you go DB. If Cam is gone, you go OT. Oh, G. Grant's got all the answers. I like that. And what's funny is that G. Grant could have probably been GM over the last two years and not done any worse. Because the, the cornerstone of this franchise is still Trevor Lawrence. It's still Tyson Campbell. It's still Andre Sisco. And I promise you, Although Balky was in those meetings, those were all Urban Meyer picks. <laughs> so, so nothing has really changed in the last two years. NP says, need to re-sign Ridley to make signing Gabe Davis worth anything. Can't trot Zay Jones out there as number three anymore. The problem with Zay Jones is not his play on the field. It's his ability to stay on the field, right? What's the old saying? The best ability is availability. I get that, 100%. Um, that's his problem. That's his problem is he just can't stay healthy. And that sucks because you see players like that all the time. I'm a huge advocate. And I'm going to just change gears here for like half a second. I'm a huge advocate of Tracy McGrady. Some of you may be too young to know who Tracy McGrady was. Basketball player, uh, played for the Orlando Magic, played for the Houston Rockets, the Wizards, all kinds of teams. One of the greatest basketball players I think of all time. Like legitimately, if he would have stayed healthy, he would have been in the conversation. He was at least as good as Kobe Bryant. I know people don't want to hear that, right? We don't want to hear that. But Tracy McGrady was a dog. Absolute dog. Couldn't stay healthy. Could not stay healthy. If that, if Tracy McGrady would have stayed healthy, the cre career trajectory of him and the conversations we're having as for goats looks a lot different. So Zay Jones is a very good player. Very good player. But he can't stay on the field. And it sucks because nobody wants to stay on the field more than Zay Jones does. Like, we're all sitting here like, oh, damn, if only Zay Jones. Zay Jones wants it more than we do. I promise you that. But you got to be on the field. You got to be on the field. It's a tough industry. It's performance-based. It's it, That's the way that it goes. It's mercantilism at its finest. If you can't stay on the field, Tim Medill says United. We are kind of mid as hell, if we're being honest. We'll see. This is where I'll disagree with you, Timmy. Because you know I'm going to disagree with you at some point or some level. I think Trevor, healthy, automatically puts this team into a top tier. I genuinely believe that. Maybe I'm a homer. But I genuinely believe a healthy Trevor Lawrence, and not last year's Trevor Lawrence, because that was an unhealthy Trevor Lawrence. I think a healthy Trevor Lawrence puts this team in the top tier. A sharpshooter says they extended Blake Hance. <laughs> we didn't talk about that at all, did we? It is on the ticker. I know I put that in the ticker, not on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, there's something, I guess. Gene asks, says O-line is underrated too. Timmy Devil says we need more depth along the D-line. No more Chazon, no more Gotsis, no more Smoot. Isaiah Jones says, you got a point there. I hope he's talking about me. Um, King David, uh, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Jacksonville Midwires. Stop it. Sharni says, vague like my feelings about the Jags right now. <laughs> Still mixed about the season. Super excited about EA college football. That's going to be a hell of a game. I can't wait. I can't wait to take some subpar mid-tier D1 team to the championship like we all like to do. King David says, hit the like button. Yeah, I mean, do it. Hit the like. More a minute 20, an hour 20 in. Hit the like button. Volkfang says, double trade down is where it's at. Sharni says, also, I just haven't been on Twitch much. I'll sure to drop mine next time if I can. Sharni, don't, don't justify it. All right? I don't need justification. Listen, I, 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 I coach a lot of amateur athletes. I say all the time. I don't need a reason or an excuse. I really don't. Like I, that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is to you to change your pattern of performance. That's all I'm asking for. I, I, don't, I don't need – listen, you got stuff going on. I got stuff going on. That's fair. That's fair. Not looking for that. Listen, you don't need to give an excuse. Okay? Sharni is a great guy. Awesome guy. I mean, one of the one of the most fun people I know. I love watching his streams. He has a skill set and a knowledge of something that I wish I had a skill set and knowledge of. I'm envious of that. I'm not looking for an excuse. I'm looking for some performance for me, selfishly. I love that stuff. Timmy the Devil says, I agree, Sharni. All of these moves feel 9 and 8 again. <laughs> Shay says, I won't stand for the Zay blasphemy. I'm not saying blasphemy about Shay. I'm uh, about Zay. I'm saying that he isn't on the field. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm saying he's not on the field. Ron Beecher says, you're right, Jason. Zay Jones is very good, but he was hurt almost all of last year. King David says, no matter what the off what the offense. We'll be better once Doug takes back the play calling or we fire him or fire Press Taylor or both. Brett E. says T-Mac was the GOAT. Hunter Miles says, what, what did I miss? He's not lying. We are mid. Like, if you told me draft the 75 overall Madden team, I would draft the Jaguars roster. You can be mid as hell and win if you have a good quarterback, says Volkfang. Thank you, Volkfang. That has been my motif, my thesis this entire time. If you have a good quarterback, you can be fine. How would you classify the uh, the Chiefs last year? Defense was good. Offense was mid. I think this offense is better than the Chiefs offense. Obviously, Sands, Patrick Mahomes. Our defense isn't quite the level of the 49ers. But if you have a quarterback, you have a quarterback. Same as left tackle. Tony D'Angelo says, hoping the bad play calling had to do with not trusting the inside offensive line to hold up. I mean, we couldn't rely or pass defense. I agree, Tony. That's the comment of the day. We're giving, we're giving Tony the comment of the day right there. Um, it's true. I I say this every show. You try calling an offense where you can't run the ball at the middle. How, what, what, what would it look like? What would it look like? You ever played Madden and you can't run the ball at the middle? What do you do? You lose is what you do. Because if you can't run the ball and you can't bring the linebackers in and you can't bring the safety downhill into the box, you're never getting your receivers open. If you can play a cover two or cover four shell behind an offense, it doesn't matter if you're in spread or if you're in two by two or three by one. It doesn't matter if you're in 10 personnel, empty personnel. It doesn't matter. If you can't run the ball and you can't bring a linebacker in, you can't bring a safety in the box, then you can just play a shell, force the offense to make a mistake at some point, whether it's a penalty or a drop or a fumble, and you will win the game. You have to be multidimensional. Why do you think these teams are going? Why do you think the Eagles went out and got Saquon Barkley? What, what do you think? Why do you think DeAndre Swift and Tony Pollard and Derrick Henry and these running backs that have been devalued are going to the good teams? You think about that for a second. You think about that. Oh, well, the Chiefs won with Isaiah Pacheco. And 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 the Bills won with, you know, whoever they had. Zach Mall, I don't know. No, you have to be – the Bills don't win. That's their problem. Look at the teams that do win, and they can run the ball. You have to be able to run the ball. 
And I don't care if you don't pay for your running back. I don't care if you can get your running back on a rookie deal, which seems to be the trend. You have to be able to run the ball. And the Jags could not run the ball at the middle. And then by the end of the season, not only could they not run the ball at the middle, they couldn't run the ball to the outside. That was the thing. At the beginning of the season, they could toss sweep, outside zone, uh, tunnel screen. They could get the ball in the horizontal passing game, or they could get the ball to the edge, and they could get some yards. But by the end of the season, the teams had figured the Jags out, and they figured out that, like, you just don't have to worry about that. And we watched, we did film breakdowns every week. It's not like we're speculating. We did film breakdowns every week, and we saw the Jags' inability to move the ball on the ground. And Travis Etienne is a good running back. So, I'll say it. I will say it until I'm out of breath, which I'm getting close to out of breath. If you don't have an offensive line, you have nothing. If you don't have a quarterback, you don't have nothing. Those are the two things you have to have by tiers. Number one, quarterback. Number two, offensive line. Everything else, figure it out. Because you have the greatest receivers of all time. But if you don't have a quarterback that can throw them the ball, it doesn't matter. You can have the greatest quarterback of all time. If you don't have an offensive line that can block, it doesn't matter. Monty Adams says, maybe we will just, maybe we'll see more of uh, Yasir Abdullah next year. Bro, why couldn't he see the field? That's a good question. And maybe it's an issue of not playing your best players. Remember when Urban Meyer wouldn't play Andre Cisco? I don't know. Isaiah Jones says, Joe Burrow was pretty bad early on in the season when he had an injury. It makes sense now. Jaggernaut says, feel for Josh, how he feel, feeling since Burns got his money with the Giants. We got to keep our boy in Duval. Come on, man. All right, we're going to show this on another show, not today. But I heard through a grapevine. I, I, I have some connections. I'm not saying I'm Dilla connections. But I have some connections with the Jaguars. And some of the things that I heard, and I kind of hinted at this on the last show, was that like GMs, and not just Trent Baalke, but other GMs in the league, actually weren't that stoked in Josh Allen's production. And I know y'all don't want to hear this. I know y'all don't want to hear this. But if you go back and watch all of Josh Allen's sacks, a third of them were on unblocked plays that most GMs feel like anyone in that position would have made. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying there is a sentiment, and I think the reason why there's a big holdup, because how often do you see this type of like holdup in a edge rusher who has that kind of production? Usually it's like, here's your money, or you're going to get your money somewhere else. There's some reluctancy in the way that Josh Allen got his production last year. Now, I am just telling you what I've heard, okay? Just telling you what I've heard. I think he's a good player. I want to keep him. But there is some disconnect in what the Josh Allen camp is asking and what teams think he's worth. Keep in mind, Josh Allen's only had one season of super production. One, okay? And this is about to be his fifth year. I'm just saying. There's some, I'm just telling you a little inside info. There's some reluctancy with giving Josh Allen the bag that he's asking for because of the way he got his production. I'm not saying I agree. Wrong, right, indifferent. I'm just telling you that's the hangup right now with Josh Allen. Uh, scrolling down here, um, JFJ says, Seriously, the Carolina Panthers should put into the receivership the way they traded away their future for a bust, and then they traded Brian Burns for a bag of balls, inflated edge pay. They also traded for C.J. Henderson and LaVisca Chanel. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, Thomas Shortledge. I agree. Josh is kind of over with the sacks. I would trade him for the draft picks, possibly. Timmy Devil says, I have Henry stiff-arming buff Leon Jacobs. Timmy, that's why I love you. I don't think I would have ever mentioned Leon Jacobs' name again for the rest of my life 
until just now. We have a Leon Jacobs reference in the chat. That's what Timmy Devil brings. I love it. Do we not remember Leon Jacobs? I'm pulling up a picture right now. I'm pulling up a picture. Oh, dude, I love that. I love that. That is just that is just peak absolute peak freaking comment right there. Like that is I I re, I re, re, I retract the comment of the of the day. I, I don't know if y'all can see this here. Let me see. Leon Jacobs, Jaguars linebacker for like one season. All right, not a lot of comments throw me off. Not a lot of comments throw me off my groove. That one, that one got me. That one got me. You know what? Actually, I think I'm going to leave this picture up for a minute. I forgot about Leon Jacobs. Okay, Timmy, I, I got to give you that one. I got to give you that one. Sharni says, Balky thinks he is smarter than he is. Plain and simple, that's our biggest problem. Very true, Sharni. Volkfang says, Josh Allen has also been on four of the worst defensive lines in the league every year. Didn't he play? And that's not true, Volkfang. The only other year that he popped off was when he was playing with Malik Jackson and, and Clayce Campbell. So the only two years he's popped off was that year and then this year. McManus to the Commanders. Does that just happen? I like that. Josh Allen has also been on. Oh, yeah, I read that one already. Henry is a hometown guy. Bring him in. So was Darius Williams. I know it's apples and oranges. I know. Timmy says Balky's whole goal is nine and eight, just enough to get to the show. Hmm, that's kind of philosophical right there. I like it. Timmy's bringing it, like always. Well, Balky was pretty smart today. Maybe. Um, we're late into the show, so I can tell you kind of how I really feel. I don't think Mitch Morse is as good as we think he is. Gabe Davis is young, but has had no production as an NFL player. Seven touchdowns. He's never had more than 600 yards. Um, I think Darnell Savage is not good at safety. I think Ronald Darby's good, but old and nickel and only played in, you know, third of the, or two thirds of the snaps. Devin Duvernay is a special teams guy. Couldn't seal Will Lutz. Didn't get Josh Allen in. So now Ridley's probably going to walk. I'm not as. This is late into the show, and I know a lot of people. Okay, I know a lot of people are going to not going to be watching this show now because it's late. I'm not huge on these signings. I'm not. I'm really not. Um, I like that they addressed key positions of need, but I don't really like the signings. The two games I watched of Mitch Morris, which were in the playoffs, which is quite frankly when I think we need him to be the best. I think he was terrible, like beyond. That Steelers game was Luke Fortner esque. Darnell Savage has given up, it gives up over a hundred NFL rating to opposing quarterbacks as a free safety. Ronald Darby, I love the, that's probably my favorite pick. Mac Jones, probably my favorite pick. And both of those guys are going to play 500 snaps from Darby and zero snaps from Mac Jones. Duvernay is a special teams guy. I'm I'm not actually huge on this free agent class, but I don't think their goal was to splash this year, contrary to the show title. We got a hit in the draft, boys. Okay, so Bryce Pope is is okay. He's bringing up Gabe Davis at eight thirty six and twenty two, seven forty six and twenty three. He's an upgrade from Zay. Okay. So Bryce, here's my only here's my only like retort to that. Is I've I watched a, I watched like probably the the last 3 weeks of the regular season in the playoffs of of the of um the Bills. And like I was struggling to find Gabe Davis on the field. I'm not kidding. Like he was not on the field a lot. Now maybe he was injured, but he was not on the field a lot. I don't know what the deal was. I don't know. Again, if he was injured, that's fine. 
but as when they he had seven touchdowns last year you're right four of those came in weeks two through six and then he had three the rest of the year so from week six on he had three touchdowns like i'm tired of guys that pop off earlier in the year and it's not like the bills were some like limp dick offense they're known for their offense so and again it's not like it's a situation where like he's a good receiver with a bad quarterback josh allen's one of the best quarterbacks in the league Uh, th- that that's again i want to be wrong i am just telling you my my instincts on these picks and again i'm a i'm a sunshine's pumper i am i'm just telling you again it's been less than 24 hours i've watched very little film on any of these guys so k- take that for what it's worth right i'll go big screen just so you know i'm being sincere here i like i will be honest with you i have not watched all the film on these guys but my first instincts when I saw the signings were like, hell yeah, these are the positions we needed. And then I started looking into like the analytics of these guys, and I was like, oof. I, I don't know. I really don't know. The saving grace for Gabe Davis, and I'll give you Gabe Davis, is that he is young. He's 24. I'll give you that. And I said earlier in the show, I think Trevor Lawrence elevates the game of everyone that has ever been on the team. Every player that's been brought into the Jaguars as a receiving player whether it's tight end running back or receiver has been elevated with trevor lawrence so maybe the front office is factoring that in i'm just telling you 800 yards his best season which wasn't even last season on the bills which is a pass heavy offense is not that impressive to me when i watched calvin ridley go for over a thousand with a significant amount of drops and there was times when I, most of, like when when the Bills were in three wide receiver sets, Gabe Davis wasn't on the field. He was out there on four wide receiver sets. Like I, again, I don't know. It just it doesn't like spark that like oh hell yeah this is the answer type thing. It doesn't. I think he's a wide receiver three, and I'm sorry, but I'm not going to get excited about a wide receiver three. Mitch Morse graded. Fourth on PFF as position last year. All right, let's take a look here. Let's take a look. Okay, let's look at the let's look at the end of the season here. All right, so look, yeah, this is pretty good. Like week two, he was good. Tampa Bay, he was good. Jets, he was good. Let's take a look at the back end of the season when they started playing some good teams. Okay, and not great. And I think we have a better one here. All right, let's take a look. Sorry, give me a second. This is the end of the season for Mitch Morse. End of the season. Week 12, 44. Week 14, didn't play week 13. Maybe it was a bye. I don't know. 61. Dallas, 58. Chargers, 52. Patriots, 62. Miami, 58. Pittsburgh, 49 with a 28 run blocking grade. 69 and against Kansas City. So I'm I'm okay with saying PFF isn't the end all be all. But if you're gonna bring PFF as like he was like, oh, he was really good. Uh 63 run block grade, 71 pass block grade by the end of the season. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not saying you're wrong. And again, I'm not trying to like say he's gonna be bad, because I think he could be good. Timmy Devil says Gabe is midi. <laughs> Genat says I feel I feel like Bulky has ruined the team. R- remember when you looked at the past five drafts and there was like three good picks? I would have fired him a year ago. Yeah, I mean, let's remove Anton Harrison. Let's remove Trevon Walker. Which Jason, that's not fair. Okay, it's not fair. It's not fair. Let's remove those two. Who was he drafted? That's good. Give me a name. Give me a name of a guy he's drafted. That's good. Don't give me the 2020. Don't give me the Urban Meyer draft because Urban Meyer was czar status. He was making all those picks. He was Bill Belichick. He was making those picks. And that's the problem. You can't build a team on free agency. You cannot do it. We've seen time and time again. You have to draft well. Bulky's not drafting well. 
He's not drafting well. Compared to Fortner. And Bryce, you're listen, Bryce, you're making a lot of great points. And like the the points that Bryce is making are the points that in my head I ping pong back and forth with. He is better than Fortner. Anyone's better than Fortner. It's just that I just I'm not as excited as and okay, so Antonio Johnson is a guy who played started two games for us last year. Two. And spoiler alert, we did not play well at the end of the season. You're right, Jason. Davis is not a wide receiver one, but is Calvin really worth the money in a second round pick for the No, he's not. He's not. And I like Gabe Davis. I don't want anyone to take that I'm I don't want anyone to take that I don't like Gabe Davis because I do like that pick. I like the youth of Gabe Davis. I like the ability that he is finally a receiver that can stretch the field. We looked at his PFF grade for down the field and over 20 yards, and we looked at the fact that he has a over 40% completion percentage of over 20 yards, which is amazing. I I, I just worry. I, I just am not as excited as these. Like I think Balky did. He addressed the positions so that he could draft young guys to replace them. Don't get me wrong. I don't think Balky did too terrible in free agency. What I'm, what my main point is, is that he's done so much damage to this team the last two years that now he's just trying to like save face. And I think it's too late unless he goes all in on offensive line. If he goes all in an offensive line in the draft, I think we might be okay. But Trevor with a concussion and a sprained meniscus and a sprained ankle and a shoulder injury doesn't matter. It does not matter. That's the bottom line. That's my only point. It's my only point. And it's not that I'm not happy with what he did today. I'm just not like pumped or ecstatic, especially after kind of digging deep into the analytics. I'm just not, and I'm being honest with you guys. AJ don't count, bro. He was a guy. I kind of missed some of this. Sorry, guys. Draft Quinion Mitchell. If we could retain Ridley. Yeah, if we could retain Ridley, I'm pumped. I heard some rumors that he might be willing to sign like a two-year deal. But why would you do that if you're him? Like, if you're Calvin Ridley, why wouldn't you go to the Panthers and sign a mega deal? Why wouldn't you go somewhere that has money that can break the bank for you? Why wouldn't you do that? Why would you sign in Jacksonville for a two-year deal? Maybe we throw him $60 million, two years, $40 million guaranteed. That's the high end, I think, that we could even offer him. Why would you do that when you could go sign a four-year $80 million deal with 50 guaranteed. I know. Oh, it's only 10 million. 10 million is a lot of money. Shay. <laughs> Shay's here. Shay, we needed you a long time ago, but that's okay. Shay's got a lot going on. And Shay was in here on Friday night, so I'm not mad. She says, I'm late. I can't wait to watch it back. No Ridley news early makes me think the chances of him staying are better than I thought. Jags won't announce until after four Wednesday. I will, I will give Shea credit. He's usually, Shea, I say this all the time. Shay, channel member Shay, is better at my job than I am. If Shay ever decided to do a YouTube channel, I would say, hey, go watch this. <laughs> Shay knows what he's talking about. Um, so if Shay says Calvin could come back, that makes me feel a little bit better. Shay makes me feel better than Trent Balky did today. And again, it's not that Trent Balky did anything wrong. It's that I think he put us so much in the hole that like, us digging a couple of feet up out of the hole is good, but it's it, I kind of still have perspective. Like, we're still in the hole. We're still in the hole, unfortunately. Hunter Miles Power says, why do all massive football nerds love Trevon so much? All the football guys I talked to says he's a crazy player. He definitely took a major step this year. Um, so I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I am a lot more optimistic about Trevon Walker than I was last year. I think a lot of Josh Allen's sacks were 
because of Tremont Walker's play this year. Like those plays where Josh Allen went unblocked and they double teamed Trevon Walker and they slid the protection to the right and let Josh Allen free release from the left. Ridley, this is from Critty 3X, says Ridley and Hunter will be Jags. Okay. That would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Ridley wants to be a small town family man. He's a Jags guy at heart. Robert Azard says they didn't put our defense in the right positions. Just ask Williams when it took a year to know he was an outside corner. Chef Florida boy. What's up with all you guys jumping in? What time is it? At 11 o'clock. Chef Florida boy, Robert Azard, Shay. They didn't, uh, he says, Trent Balky trying to save his job right now. Still going to draft a linebacker in the third. Yeah. Jags for life. Why are you critical on everyone but our mediocre quarterback? That's fair. I mean, statistically, he was mediocre. Jags for life. I, I'll give you that. But I will argue that I think when Trevor is upright and, health, and healthy, that he's not mediocre. Does he fumble? Yeah. Does he try to force balls deep into tight windows when he could take the check down? Yeah. But he's still young. He's, I believe he's the same age as Gabe Davis, and he's still younger than Luke Fortner. TZ Sports Collector says Jaguars should hire Jags United as a new GM. You know, I actually interviewed for a job um, for like a like a front office position with the Jacksonville Iceman. And I was, I literally was, I was super honest with them. I, I was like, Hey guys, like, I'll be honest with you. Like I want to be a GM. So if I take this job, I'm, this is a true story. Not that long ago. I said, if I take this job, does this put me on a trajectory or a career track to be a GM? I asked them straight up and they said, yes. But and there was like a couple of the people in, in the room. They said, we also want to be GMs. So like, and I was like, oh, damn. Okay. And it kind of made me realize that like, you either got to know somebody or you got to start that job when you're young and I'm not young. So I think, although I'd love to be a GM, I have a job now where I am managing high school athletics I'm kind of like a GM of high school athletics, which isn't as glorious, but I like it. I get to mentor young, young athletes. I get to make a difference in like the future generation. And I get to sit here and talk Jags on YouTube and kind of wade there for a second. I was like, do I want to grind and move cities every two or three years to try to be a GM to only get fired and have people in a random YouTubers chat asking for my job <laughs> or do I want to be happy? Sometimes you got to be happy, and I'm happy, mainly because of you guys. Um, I'm going to get out of here. Last comment I'm going to read is Bryce Pope says, you think you could do a better job than Balky, honestly? And the answer to that, Bryce, is yes, I do. Yes, I do think I do a better job. Now, I'm not naive. There's day-to-day -day transactions with bumping guys to practice squad, bumping them back up, getting guys off other practice squads, building a, a team of scouts that go into the senior bowl to college campuses. And there's a, a skill set in that that I think bulky has. that I think we don't really give enough credit to, but I'm also not an idiot and I see things that he does and I see things that I would do. And when I think things like I would draft that player instead of that player, and that's a no brainer. And then I see that second player that I would have drafted go on to flourish and I think uh yeah I could probably draft better than Trent Balky not having a scout team that goes out and scouts uh yeah I could probably make better decisions in free agency than Trent Balky could does he have more experience yes does he know more people in the industry yes but I will answer your question yes I do think I could do his job better than him and I'll end it there and and, and maybe maybe that's arrogant Right. And maybe that's prideful. That's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm humble. I'm humble in a lot of ways. I really am. Um, what, what perturbs me about bulky is when he goes up in front of a microphone and he says things like, uh, the, the 
to to insinuate that he knows more than we do and then makes a terrible decision or when he's when when he says things that we act like we don't know what we're talking about and then we go to see it happen to fruition and it's like i don't know man sometimes these guys are a little too smart for their own good um and i'm rooting for the jags i really am um but that's it that's it for me long stream tonight had a great time loved it loved it i seriously am so thankful for all of you that are here all the channel members that were here thank you for supporting the stream all the commenters that were here thank you for supporting the stream i really appreciate it um you can just hit the like button and that would support the stream and it would cost you nothing uh you could also tell a friend about the stream who's a jags fan that would also cost you nothing so if you want to help and you want to uh contribute to the stream do that um but ultimately Thank you for being here. I seriously appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, I love talking Jags with you guys. It's one of my favorite things that I do. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you guys on Friday night. Ooh, the players. So the players are this weekend, the TPC. So it's in it's in Jacksonville. So this weekend might be a little weird stream-wise just because I don't know about my coherence will be after being at a golf tournament all day for four straight days. But I will do my best. Definitely follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be on there. Um, Instagram, I'll probably put some random pictures up of me at the players. So make sure you do that. Um, hit me up. Let me know what y'all think. Thank you again. Seriously, I love you guys. I will see you guys the next time I see you. Uh, until then, as always, go Jags. Oh, uh, let me get you a bag, or I'll give you my bag and all. Thank you.